Is the housing market about to crash? That's what I want to talk about today. Some of the things that I'm noticing, I'm trying to pick up on the trends that I saw back in 2008, 2009. I was in school back then. I was very interested in real estate, but I was sitting in class the day Lehman went under. I watched that stock market go from, I think it was like 12,000 to just under 7,000. Uh, I got into this business right in the middle of basically a recession. So I've been almost unnecessarily paranoid during this boom the last several years, but I'm starting to see some signs and I want to talk to you guys today about what those signs are, what the macroeconomic trends are, and why we should start to approach this real estate market with a little bit of caution. In order to understand our future in any walk of life, you got to look back at your past. So I'm going to talk about this past recession, that housing crash of 2008, we'll call it 2008, but some of the signs started to show up a little earlier. And let's talk about what happened then and what we have in common with that situation now. I would say the single largest cause of the last housing crash was undisciplined spending by consumers and unregulated transactions and finance by the big banks. You had rampant fraud, so we're just gonna call it what it is, fraud by the big banks. Um, they were lending money to people that couldn't pay it back. They were bundling those loans selling them on the market to investors, institutional investors, stamping them as AAA. If you guys remember some of those things, and I had no idea what these terms meant back when I was in school, credit default swaps, mortgage-backed securities. They were essentially giving loans to people that they knew wouldn't be able to pay them back, bundling those as marketable securities, and then selling them to institutional investors and buying insurance on those marketable securities, or mortgage-backed securities, I should say, and rating them AAA. How could you give a subprime loan to a person with a 600 credit score, bundle a whole bunch of loans like that, and then stamp them AAA and sell them to investors? So I don't think we have that kind of problem right now. I think that some of that has started to creep back in. If you noticed over the last couple of years under the Trump presidency, a lot of those stop gaps that were put in place during the Obama era have sort of been scaled back. We're living in a very highly deregulated environment, but I think that banks are still very risk averse. And I think that as a whole, people haven't totally forgotten about the last housing crisis, but there are a few of those aspects that are starting to creep into the real estate market now. And I think the most prevalent one is the presence of flippers. Um, I still think flippers are adding value through renovations and through improvements. Whereas back in 2006 and five and four, people were just flipping for the sake of flipping. You buy a property, you hold it for a couple weeks, couple months, and you sell it as is. You make 10, 15, 20% for no reason. Uh, I don't think that's happening as much now but you're starting to see unsustainable spikes in pricing and inventory levels kind of contributed to that. But now all of those things are sort of coming back full circle. And I'll tell you what those things are now and what I'm noticing in this market, in this market. So what's happening right now? Let me come out and first say this. I don't think the market's gonna crash, so we don't have to wait till the end of this video for you to find that out. I don't think the market's gonna crash, but I think what we're experiencing right now is the beginning of a little bit of a correction. Now, I have millions of dollars in the street right now. I'm building homes all over Long Island, and you would think it's not in my best interest to say this, but I share everything that I learn, and I'm learning as we go along, as we're doing this. So. I'm noticing a couple of things. The first thing is I'm noticing inventory levels start to creep up a little bit. Now, I would much rather have a little bit of a correction than a crash. So to me, this is welcome news. I want to start to see some of the people that aren't really adding value get squeezed out. Facts. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it, okay? So the guy that's doing a crappy job flipping, I want him to get squeezed out. Um, the guy that's not really contributing any value to the market and just speculating, I want them to get squeezed out. Because an unsustainable 
spike in pricing or unnaturally low levels in inventory are going to, in the long run, contribute to a larger correction or crash. So what am I seeing right now? I'm seeing inventory levels start to creep up. I'm seeing, obviously, interest rates are, are slowly rising. The Fed's set to uh, raise rates again, despite efforts from the White House to sort of bully the Fed into not doing that. Um, we also have some, uh, some headwinds coming from this, uh, this trade war that's brewing with China and within NAFTA. Those are gonna start to have an impact. For example, I'm paying 40% more for lumber than I was 15 or 18 months ago. That's gonna decrease builder confidence. That's gonna decrease new home starts. So there's a bunch of trends, or I should say economic indicators that contribute to the housing market. The most obvious ones are interest rates, right? And then you have consumer confidence, you have um, spending, consumer spending, new home starts. There's a builder confidence index, right? So I look at all of those things and try to figure out where we're going. Now, I'm lucky because I'm somewhat insulated. I'm in this niche market in Long Island, just outside of New York City and my focus has been and always will be good school districts. If you look at the last crash, a lot of the towns that never recovered or are now just barely 10 years later entering the, the, the territory of their previous pricing, or I should say highs, um, were, the, were the tougher areas with, without the good school districts. So I think, I'll be, I think we'll all be okay in this area, but in the speculative markets, in the areas that have seen unnatural or unsustainable growth, we're starting to see some things now that are going to contribute to this correction that I see coming. So what do you do now? How do you approach this situation, this market, as a buyer? As a buyer, I would say make a move because inventory levels are creeping up and interest rates are still decent. Remember, we're used to free money. Uh, it was never like this where you could get a mortgage for three, four, or five percent. We're just about five percent now on a 30 year. I would still make that move. If you're looking to buy a house, every percentage point of interest is going to cost you hundreds of dollars a month for 30 years. So make that move. Inventory levels are climbing, the fall is coming, you'll be able to nab a deal. And if you're willing to do a little bit of work, where you've sort of squeezed out the flipper, but you might have to do a little bit of a project, this is a great time for you. If you're a seller, book your profit. Uh, I believe that you've had a great run, and even if you're not gonna get that last few thousand dollars that you thought you would get, I still think this is a good market. You have quite a bit of demand still, at least that's what I see from my clients that I'm taking out and the homes that I'm building and selling. So this is a good time for you. For investors that are in deep, it's time to think about strategy. It's time to think about where you're gonna be a year from now or two years from now, okay? Because things happen quick. Six months goes by in the blink of an eye. Uh, for new investors and for people looking to get into this business, and I'm talking to you guys, you reach out to me all the time. You ask me about where you can go, what courses you can take, who you can shadow to sort of learn the business. Be careful, okay? This is a market for experienced investors. You really have to sort of have a feel for where this market is going. Otherwise, you could be like that guy that jumped into flipping in 2007 and that guy didn't do so well, all right? So, or girl, that girl didn't do so well. So, uh, definitely be cautious. Um, don't be on the fence right now. This is not a good time to be on the fence. If you're a buyer, buy. I'll help you find a good deal. If you're a seller, keep going. Finish your house and sell it. Don't start a 100-unit condominium right now in, in an area that's kind of, you know, eh. So, you know, be careful, be vigilant, be aggressive, and try your best not to do something that's out of your comfort zone. That's the key for what I do. People ask me to go invest in Texas and invest in Florida and go to Brooklyn. Brooklyn's dead, Queens is slow. Try not to leave your comfort zone and you'll be all right. I hope that this advice was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you're interested in more of this daily content, I put out so much on Instagram every day, at Pinnacle Real Estate on Instagram. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.